Recently, I talked to this man about this house and how it was consumed by molten rock and how he rebuilt this house on the same property just a few feet away. Today, we're going to talk to him about how he transformed this barren black rock into a wonderful Garden of Eden. The extraordinary thing to me is that you're you're basically growing stuff not directly on the lava but everywhere you can see out here is lava and you've poured a mixture of cinder that's basically is it crushed lava it says is it crushed lava or yeah, is it tephra it's a uh, crushed up lava like this what you see here the black lava um, now that'll that'll break down and make a very fertile soil the red cinder that I use in the driveway um, it's a little higher in iron content than uh, the black lava and so a lot of things won't grow in in the high iron content so and it's it's a lot lighter it's usually it's from an aflo which has got a lot more gases in it so it's more porous it's a lot lighter easy to easier to break up easier to truck because it's lighter and so it's cheaper and so you put that where you don't want things to grow you put the black cinder where you want things to grow and then you put the gray base course where you want a good solid foundations for something because that's a very heavy dense lava rock that uh, um, it's almost like granite it's real heavy and um, it makes a real good um, base for any kind of a foundation that you want to build on so those are the three different types of basic um, rock that we get around here okay. and you know that's all that's all we have here is lava rock to begin with you know up on the north side of the island where uh, the volcano hasn't done anything for 10,000 years there's you'll have good deep soil up there but but down here uh, it's in the process it's in the process and some of these ferns uh, you can see some green ferns that are in some of these cracks and those started growing after a year after the lava had flowed it's kind of surprising how quickly it it comes back and down where all those treetops are laying on top of the lava down there um, there's loose lava on the surface a lot of times along with the rotting wood everything gets washed down into the cracks and there's some trees down there that are already eight or ten feet tall in uh, 11 years time that have just grown on their own so it's surprising how quickly things will grow where you have that combination of a little bit of that loose lava and the uh, mulch down there so who where did you get the idea that you could actually pull this off did, did you see an example of somebody that's come in on uh, pressure lava and said uh, I'm just gonna throw some stuff out here and see what happens um I just started doing it over at the, the first house I built out here and uh, you know I, I've always known that if you put some uh, mulch or something in with soil it's gonna you know enhance it in, in one way or another and give it one kind of a uh, thing that it needs like you know here we need something to hold the moisture uh, back in Wisconsin you had clay you needed something to get it to drain better so uh, it depends on the circumstances that you have and uh, and what you have to work with right. uh, what you uh, want to uh, um, combine to accomplish uh, well what what have you had the experience that just won't grow no matter what you do is there anything out here that that you failed to grow or it looks like some of the stuff is not doing as well as others what, what was the... well there's um there's a lot of things that have a real hard time in the wind like you can see the banana trees here the they're shredded because of the strong winds here mm -hmm. i've got um a couple in other places where they get a little bit of shelter and uh um, they're they've got some pretty good uh, racks of bananas on them already um, these I've only had some real straggly small racks of bananas on um, these I'm going to eliminate these guys here all at some point in time but uh, um, something that didn't uh, no I think everything will grow but some things just struggle more than others 
I don't have any uh, avocado trees here because uh, they don't like the wind. Anything that doesn't like the wind, I, I'm waiting to plant a lot of those things until I get a windbreak uh, that's actually up a, a decent height. Some of the windbreak that I planted here, I ended up building a rock wall to protect it from the wind to get it a start because um, even though they're a, a plant that's made for windbreak, they just were struggling very, very difficult for them to grow out here. Now your palms, are those coconut palms? Or is that else? Uh, I believe those are fishtail palms. Um, the one was actually on my neighbor's property. She planted it before she left the, the island. And I went over there and I, I found it and it was on the, on the lava with just one thread of uh, root going into the soil. So I brought it over here and I threw it in a, in a pot and, and raised it up and put it in and that's, that's happy there. It's real happy there. Um, and that was seven years ago when she put that in, uh, in the ground over here and it was, you know, this big. Um, this other one I got from uh, my neighbor and um, um, it was in a pot, maybe about this big, um, maybe a year and a half, two years after I planted the other one. So they're both real happy there. And um, one's roots are kind of getting into some of the other things there, like my asparagus over there, it's kind of interfering with the asparagus a little bit. So um, I ask it not to do that, but it, you know, I'm just, uh, <laughs> Uh, how many people that are living out here within visual sight, within a square mile, basically living on lava like you are? How many people are actually farming, you think, or oh, a garden of any? A handful. I mean, we have all the, there's probably over a hundred houses in the subdivision over there. I'm not sure how many people are really doing much for growing things, you know, people have a you know some bananas or some papayas or a few things but but not nobody on this level really. well um uh, my neighbor on the other side of the highway she's uh she's got many many more things growing she's got actually she sells these uh, palm trees that uh she's got hundreds of them over there oh. not thousands of them so um um she's definitely a, got a green thumb i got a lot of these plants from her actually uh years ago at first when I first came in um, I'm just trying to expand from within here all the time now because there's a uh, fire ants and cokey frogs and a slug that carries a disease on the island and the lava kind of took care of all the invasive species out here except for me and uh, um, so I'm trying to keep it as sterile as possible as, as, I, as I can and uh, keep those things away because that Fire ants are the main thing I don't want. Uh, the cokey frogs, I can hear them and go and take care of them when they're getting close. But uh, the fire ants, once you got them, I don't know. I don't. I don't want to have to poison uh, for insects at all. So, so um, I've talked to a lot of people that that love living out here on the lava like you do. Would you encourage somebody to come out here and live? Stay away. <laughs> um, you know, it's not for everybody. It's definitely not for everybody. Um, you have to have uh, patience to grow things. You have to um, be willing to deal with, you know, this is Hawaii, but at the same time, the conditions out here are fairly harsh. You have uh, the trade winds all the time. The sun is very intense out here. That's, that's what makes it hard for the plants to grow. The, the wind, we have, you know, 20 mile an hour winds almost all the time at least and we'll have days or a week when you have 30 or 40 mile an hour winds all the time and that's that's hard on plants it's hard on it's hard on me it's very hard on me especially when i was building the house trying to flip around the roofing or a piece of plywood in the wind it's very difficult and by yourself it's hard enough but then you're dealing with the wind too yeah uh, and a sail a really oh yeah 20 pound sail that you're holding on to definitely I'm gonna fill in low areas and um just uh, got a lot of different things now i'm trying to expand from within for the most part just because i don't want to bring any of those invasive species in here anymore and i have enough things that i can uh, take cuttings from or will uh, 
provide seeds like this tree right, right here. You can see a couple of seed pods on this little tree. Right. That's actually a royal point sienna tree. That uh, this little one. Um, this 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 guy right here. Um, uh, well, there's a few pods on there. Okay. And uh, Lava Dave planted this uh, way over there a couple of while after my house burned. And right. then I um, dug this one up over there, brought it over, and the, it produced some seed pods that I've planted maybe six or eight other um, of the same tree, and they get a beautiful flower on them. Um, they, you have to watch a lot of this stuff because it can be kind of invasive sometimes. Um, and then we have, uh, well, we've got the papaya tree there, that uh, tall, tall tree over there. You can see there's a bunch of papayas on there. I've gotten at least 50 papayas off of that tree already. Huh. Um, we've got the banyan, we've got some uh, um, uh, pineapples, we've got uh, one mango here. I think it's nice. Nice. Uh, you can see if you walk down the line. Yeah, yeah. There's uh, a bunch more uh, pineapples in here. <laughs> These are uh, certain cherries here. There's a couple of cherries on there right now. What kind of cherries? Certain kind of cherries. Okay. Um, and we've got a little pumpkin. There's, uh, that's a rosemary there. It started from the plant. i got a lot of rosemary in different places. There's a um, piece of one on here. There's certain them cherries. Kind of look like a little pumpkin, and uh, they they grow real easy from seed. You can see there's more on that one over there. Plumeria tree here. What do you call it? Plumeria. Plumeria. It's a. Um, they use it for lays a lot, and um, um, they're really fragrant. There. I was gonna say, is that the smell that I'm getting? Yeah. Yeah, I'm smell. getting smell to them. <laughs> and then, uh, like the, the lettuce, I just uh, let the lettuce go to seed. And it basically reseeds itself. Uh, I, I didn't plant this stuff, actually. I, I pulled a bunch out and just keep it in certain areas. Um, and it, every every generation, it seems to adapt to the weather out here a little better because a lot of seed will bolt in hot weather. Whereas, um, you know, you can see this is uh, looking pretty happy right here. These are um, pineapples that uh, I planted uh, a little over a year ago. And uh, they're all looking pretty happy. These are all white pineapples on this uh. side of the driveway and yellow on the other side. Okay. Of the You're supposed to keep them apart. I, guess. <laughs> I don't know if I pointed out the couple more pictures. Yep. Um, this is uh, mulberry. Um, and it seems to be really happy here. There's, uh, um, uh, and I've got a number of these started from uh, cuttings on. I just um, started. Cut a couple off these uh, a couple days ago and started some more. I got maybe six or eight different ones that are already started and they're starting. Tangerine tree. Um, mango tree. Another Royal Point Sienna that I couldn't do way too many of the smaller but oh, yeah. out there. Um, this is uh, guava. Just finished up on, uh, I think it, this is. Maybe just one guava up there. I've got a couple of guavas off of this in the last uh, month and a half, probably. Um, so, the plumeria here, uh, my neighbor whose house burned down four months after the mine, she brought uh, in some plumerias that uh, she gave me, and, uh, and we planted them, and that's where I got these two trees from, and they seem to be pretty happy there. And here's a surname cherry that uh, is the mother of all the other ones on the property here. And, uh, you know, I think there's that that rosemary over there by that banana trees is uh, the, the mother of all the rosemary on the property. Okay. And then uh, this is a lime tree that's uh, great. Uh, there's probably still 100 limes on there. Almost. There's uh, this is an orange. That's another tangerine that has given me many hundreds of uh, tangerines. A couple of uh, pomegranate trees. A couple more uh, bunches of bananas there with some volunteer tomatoes underneath it that uh, I have uh, a green water system that comes out uh, from my kitchen sink and my shower and that goes and feeds the uh, banana trees that in my washing machine that um, 
they, uh, I guess they like uh, the soaps in, uh, in a lot of different things. And then uh, we have uh, a couple of, uh, a few uh, kale plants over there with a couple of tomatoes also. Mm -hmm. And then over this, this is basically where I want to put uh, a windbreak to, because this is where we usually get our wind from. Uh -huh. And the wind is really the, the one thing that's really hard for uh, the plants to grow. A lot of them, even the windbreak, a lot of the, the windbreak when I planted them, I had to build a rock wall for a windbreak to get them to be able to start.